Bryce here and I'm Draco with Miss Laura Shigihara. If you don't know who she is, you haven't been playing enough Plants vs. Zombies, I think. <laughs> Hello. She's definitely a wonderful, wonderful composer and orchestrator. Plants vs. Zombies being your number one most recognized thing lately with PopCap Games. Could you just go ahead and introduce yourself for the bronies that watch us probably don't know who, who you are exactly? Oh, okay. My name is Laura Shigihara. I also go by Super Shiggy on YouTube. I'm a professional video game composer and sound designer. I also write, produce, and perform a lot of songs, and I'm developing an independent video game. So, you got a lot of stuff under your belt there. I mean, with, <laughs> you've done a lot of fan work. Like, uh, uh, I personally love your Skyward Sword tracks. Oh, thank you. But the one I was a little more interested in was you actually did the voice for the singing sunflower in World of Warcraft. Oh yeah, yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. <laughs> Now, you've done a lot of things from indie games to friends games to a lot of big name things like with Play for Japan, which had a ton of musicians that we would know like uh, Yui Matsu and uh, I always mess up the names. I hate to do that because it's very disrespectful. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Yamaka or uh, Yamaka, Yamaka, that's it. <laughs> Yamaka. Uh, uh, oh, Yamaka. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I'm trying, but I don't want to butcher it because I don't want to disrespect anybody. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I mean, I think that everybody has a hard time with names like from other countries that we're not familiar with. I'm sure I've butchered my fair share of like other names. Well, there's a couple of uh, music videos that use your songs with uh, Minecraft video work, like Cube Land and From the Ground Up, which are immensely popular. Yeah, I worked with um, Slamacow Creations on that. He's one of my friends who does like various animations and he's branching out into other stuff. And he asked me if it would be okay to make a music video for the Cube Land song. So I was like, yeah, that'd be cool. It was really fun working with him. I think he's very talented. Now, you've made a couple of songs, I, I guess, are inspired by Minecraft. Do you enjoy Minecraft a lot? I do. Yeah, I haven't played in a while, but I used to play a lot more. I just feel like, I know everyone plays it for different reasons, but for me, it kind of tapped into some sort of survival, like, you know, when you're a kid and you go to the beach and you purposely build a sandcastle too close to the water just so that you can defend it. <laughs> I think everybody knows that. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what it felt like to me, sort of like, I don't know, that really exciting feeling of building up a fort and just like, I always played on survival mode. Because I liked having the threat of bad guys around. It just made it more exciting. But yeah, I, I play a lot of Minecraft. All right. Now, can you just uh, go through how you got started in video game uh, composition, video game sound engineering, or, or sound design, rather? Oh, sure. Let's see. So I was classically trained on the piano from a young age. And so I was like pretty interested in music. And I always liked video game music, too. Like, when I was a kid, I'd, I played a lot of Mega Man and Capcom games. So I remember writing in a journal, like, oh, wouldn't it be cool to compose for Capcom? Because that was the company I was really into as a kid. But where I grew up, I think people were pretty rigid about what you could be when you grew up. Everyone's like, you need to go to a four-year college and be a doctor or engineer or a lawyer. And, and you're crazy if you want to do anything else. So I always kind of grew up thinking, like, well, music is fun and creative stuff is fun, but it's like a hobby. And I didn't really think about making it a career. But then in college, in college, I actually majored in international relations and business. And I took a bunch of computer science classes, but always on the side, I was like composing and I played in a jazz trio and sang at church and, you know, did a lot of music stuff. And at some point I gave my friend in Japan a CD with some songs on it and like different music I'd made. And she but that telling me, because she worked for like a teen magazine at the time, she submitted it to a bunch of record companies that they did promotions with. And they wanted to give me auditions like as a singer in Japan. So they contacted my parents and my parents thought it was a joke because they had no idea what was going on. But I ended up flying to Japan and auditioning at these big record labels 
for singing and stuff. And I ended up turning down like a couple contracts for personal reasons, but it was at that point that I was kind of like, whoa, maybe I could actually have a career in music. Like it was, it was a very exciting time for me. So that's how I decided I wanted to get into music or I guess take it as, more seriously as a career. And then as for game music, after college, I did a bunch of different things, but it, it was when my friend who was consulting for a casual games company said, you know, like, oh, you love video game music and I like your music and you should compose for this game that I'm consulting for. So at the time, that company had a lot of people working in the Ukraine that could have done the music. You know, there were a lot of like artists that also composed and musicians that were also programmers. So they didn't really need me. And I felt like I would be like, the bottleneck if I didn't finish in time. So I, I basically was like, you know, I'll do it for free. I'm, I'm so happy to be working on a video game. I will, you know, do the best job I can and you don't have to pay me. And so I ended up doing the music. They let me do it. And the CEO was like, oh, I really like it. So after that, he hired me for several subsequent paid projects. And that's kind of how I started building up my portfolio. Sounds like you pretty much, well, not like that. You, you had the right connections and that kind of boosted where you are today. And I just want to ask, uh, when you were composing, did you ever have a point in time where you thought that, oh, this isn't good enough or this uh, this doesn't quite match what I want to do, but had to submit it anyway because of a deadline? Yeah, I think that, that well, there's obviously times when I would look at my work and go like, oh, I don't like this, you know, I, I wish I could do this better. I think like every project I've worked on, I've learned something new. And also, I don't know, I think for a lot of creative people, you kind of get in the zone sometimes or you're in that state where everything is like clearer. Like for me, there will be times when I, I hear the music in my head so loudly, it kind of sounds like there's a radio playing in the background. And so when I'm in that state, it's much easier for me to compose because it's like all there and I'm just trying to get it out from my head onto sheet music. But then when I'm not in that state, I sort of have to do things more iteratively. So during those times, and especially if it's something I'm less familiar with, it's, it's a lot harder. But I try my best and usually end up learning something in the process. Well, it's always good to learn as you go and you kind of adapt as you go there. Now, I did notice something since you like Minecraft a lot. I noticed that you partnered with C418, who's a composer for a lot of Minecraft stuff. Mm hmm how was that working with him? Was it fun? Was it interesting? Did you kind of fangirl a little bit maybe? <laughs> um, he's one of my friends, actually. Like the game audio community is pretty small. So like a lot of us know each other and um, we've, you know, hung out before at the game developers conference and stuff like that. So we just had been meaning to collaborate for a while on something. I think I actually met him through TIG Source, which is an independent games community like a while back. And it was fun working on it. Like he sent the song over without like any words or anything or any like singing melody. And I just kind of messed around with it and, you know, just like tried to sing along, get a melody and then write the words in. And so it was, it was a fun process and he's, he's really easygoing and fun to work with. So, yeah. Well, it's always good. And it seems like you made a lot of friends in the music industry a little bit there. <laughs> yeah. It's a small community. I think, I've been pretty actively involved in the indie game community for a while. So just like, you know, every year the industry gets smaller. I think when I first started doing work, I didn't really know anyone. But then every year you meet new people and those people know people and it just becomes like a lot smaller <laughs> over time. All right. So you evidently like games. What's your favorite game genre in the play? Oh, genre? Huh. Let's see. That's a tough one because I like games from like every genre. But I think if I had to pick one, probably like action adventure or like action RPG type games. Things that sort of fall into like Chrono Trigger or Secret of Mana. I think I like, I don't know, do you call it action adventure? The ones where you move around, like you level up and there's like a story and everything, but you can control yourself during battle. Like you're not locked into battle. Yeah, kind of like, oh, um, Darksiders or Devil May Cry a little bit, except with a leveling feature instead. So maybe like Castlevania Symphony of the Night? 
Um, yeah, like, well, I, well, I like those as well, but um, sort of like Zelda Link to the Past, where you can move around the open world and you can fight enemies, but then you level up in the sense that you might encounter like a big stone that you can't move at first, but then you get an item that allows you to break the stone and go to another area and you're sort of teased the whole game like, hey, what's beyond this area? And you can't get there until you get the, the sort of lock and key item. Like, I really like games like that and games with good stories. I also really like StarCraft and games that engage you a lot. <laughs> like I joked to my friend once that um, I had hurt my finger and I took Advil for it. But then one time I didn't have Advil and I just played StarCraft and it was like just as effective as a painkiller. <laughs> Never heard that one before, but I'm sure <laughs> a lot of people can attest to that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, now what's your favorite game overall? Like, if you had to choose just one, which is the one that you keep going back to to play over and over again? Well, that's tough because I have a favorite game of all time, but I also have a couple games that are like my most replayable games. <laughs> so my favorite game of all time is Chrono Trigger. And I think the game that I've played the most in terms of it has a beginning and end and I've passed it the most times is probably Legend of Zelda Link to the Past or Secret of Mana. Ooh, Secret of Mana. Yeah, I love that game. <laughs> no, a lot of people love that game. It's hard for me to pick just one. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really hard to pick just one. I'm there, and I, I can pick probably about 17 different ones I like to play. <laughs> now, I've got a friend in the community. Um, I don't know if you're into the Brony community or not. Galaxy Art does a lot of animations. Whatnot. He basically took to the moon mm -hmm. you know, like the intro sequence with the song that you composed. Mm -hmm. And he ponified it. Now he gives Rainbow Dash, uh, Applejack, Rarity, Twilight in there. Pretty interesting. Oh, that's cool. I should check that out sometime. <laughs> what do you think of uh, fan work like that? Like, There's a bunch of fan work just for the Plants vs. Zombies, zombie on your lawn type of stuff. People live actioning it. People mm -hmm. actually drawing it out on like flip note and stuff. What, what do you think of fan art like that or, or fan works like that for music that you've created oh i think it's great i mean anytime anyone sends me something i always feel so like honored that anyone took the time to do something like that i try to keep like on my youtube for example i try to keep like a playlist of remixes you know or covers that people have done so like yeah because I, I just think it's really cool sort of people being creative and getting into it yeah okay we talked a little bit about before uh we started recording here you are into My Little Pony a little bit there. You, you said you like Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy. Are, are there any other ponies that you kind of relate to or, or really enjoy listening to? <laughs> um, listening to? Well, yeah, I think, yeah, we were talking about this some of my friends. Uh, I think that I'm probably like half relating to Pinkie Pie because I'm usually the type of person that's like, oh, let's organize this event. And, you know, I, I really like talking to my friends and making them smile. And I'm also like, I, I relate a bit to Fluttershy because when I'm not comfortable, I guess I close up and I get more quiet and I have a lot of um, anxiety too. Like, so I get nervous before I have to perform and, and stuff like that. That's like rarity because I think that even though she's kind of like, I, at first I was like, oh, she's so over the top and like snooty, but I think she has a really good heart and she's got a really good work ethic. And I often get in situations where I promise people stuff, you know, oh yeah, I'll do music for your game or I'll help you out with this. And it's just like, I get overwhelmed with everything I've told people I will do for them. <laughs> so there was one episode with Rarity where I kind of related to her because she sort of promised stuff to everybody. And yeah. You evidently like the show, enjoy it a lot. Do you consider yourself a brony or do you follow any of the bronies at all? I'm a pig sister. I don't just. <laughs> um, I, the term brony does that just mean like I, I was under the impression it was like guys that like My Little Pony, but does it just mean like fans of the show or? It's come to evolve to mean fans of the show. There's a lot of people that don't enjoy the Pegasus sister because it's longer, <laughs> but mainly <laughs> because it, it doesn't seem as good because it separates the fandom. So ah, uh, I see. We, we've evolved bronies to involve. Everyone, so it's kind of unisex at this point. Oh, I see. Um, well, I'm definitely a fan of the show, and I, I think it's cool how, well, it's got, like, a good message for people. So I like that, you know, if people are kind of coming together over that, then that's that's neat. Now, 
the Brony community has actually spawned a lot of good fan games, and one of which the show creator herself, uh, Lauren Faust, mm-hmm. is helping work on right now, Binance Magic. Have you followed that at all? I haven't, but I think I heard about it, and I was kind of curious to to see more about it. It was uh, it was a fighting game, not bloody or anything like that, and <laughs> no finisher moves, but it was a game that it got C and D by Hasbro, which you know people are gonna be upset about, but you gotta understand trademarks and how that works. But mm-hmm. they they've uh, since rebranded, and Lauren Faust is helping them with character designs. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, that's fantastic. That must be like a big honor for the developers. I I think I could hear the the developers fangasming when she offered that. <laughs> but are there any surprises that there's this big of a I guess an indie development movement since the mid to late two thousands? Am I surprised about it? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Are Are you surprised about it? Did you kind of expect it? What's your feeling on the indie movement? I don't know if I was surprised or not surprised. I don't know if I thought about that, but I have for a while just kind of been anticipating the the decentralization of a lot of big media industries, you know, like the recording industry, for example, like both with music and, and games before, like, you know, 20 years ago, everything was coming out of big companies and it was very difficult if you wanted to do something on your own. Whereas now it's, you know, a single person that's not affiliated with a company can very, you know, they can make their own game if they want, or they can publish an album and get a following of, of supporters. And I think that's really, really great. And I'm, I'm kind of hoping for other industries too, that are sort of controlled by larger companies, that there will be more decentralization. Some of my writer friends, for example, would love to get their books published, but it's, it's very, it's been difficult for them. So I'm hoping that there will be a similar kind of movement in those areas. As for indie games in particular, I I think it's fantastic because for a while, I almost felt like the industry was kind of growing stagnant, like a lot of sequels and a lot of just clones. And when you have people who can make their own games, I think it encourages a lot of creativity and growth. So some of, you know, the most creative things that I've played in the last 10 years or so have come out of the independent game community. So I think it's wonderful. (laughs) Well, definitely. A lot of the indie games are really good. Um just a, a few of them, like Minecraft is considered an indie game because it came out of nowhere, had no publisher really, and mm-hmm. there it was. Very popular. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, if you could go back or forward in time or, or say present, what was the one game that you wish you could have or want to work on? <laughs> um. Let's see. That's a tough one. I mean, I would I guess it would probably just be one of the games that I I personally enjoyed. But at the same time, like, I think I really like doing vocal music. And back in the old days, it was a little harder to include that sort of stuff. So maybe, hmm, I don't know. (laughs) That's a hard one. Um, Maybe one of the recent Zelda games or Final Fantasy games. Because I, I would really have liked to contribute maybe like a, a an ending vocal theme or something like that. I mean, Final Fantasy's had amazing vocal work. I mean, they still play Eyes on Me in Japan, I hear. <laughs> and I remember watching an interview with uh, Mr. Yui Matsu that he's just surprised every time it plays on the radio because people love the song so much. <laughs> now... Is there a favorite video game composer that you personally enjoy more than the others? Or is the entire scene pretty much leveled out and they're all good? Oh, um, <laughs> I think my favorite composer is probably, my favorite game composer is probably Yasunori Mitsuda. So he did like Xenogears and Chrono Trigger, Chrono Cross. And I think his work is just very, it's very melodic. So it's very memorable. And it's complex, but it's still easy to sort of like understand what he's trying to do. I think, well, I'm a big fan of classical music, but I think a lot of my friends like classical music is not super relatable to them. Um, they don't really like it, but a lot of the things that classical composers do can be found in video game music, like counterpoint melodies and, you know, like the kind of stuff you'd hear in symphonias and inventions and really kind of being creative with the arrangement itself. So I think his music has a lot of that, but it also has these sort of unique and whimsical, mysterious melodies that I really, really like. And I was so honored because 
I got to talk to him and he actually knew who I was. So I was like so flattered, but yeah. That's definitely a flattering moment when someone that you kind of idol knows who you are. <laughs> but I like a lot of composers. I really like Uematsu, of course. You know, he's sort of like the, you know, kind of one of the original people. And who else? Well, Akira Yamoko is really cool. And Yoko Kano. Well, she's done some games and stuff, but I like her music a lot. Yoko Shimomura is good. Yoko Kano has done a lot of music. If I'm, I'm trying to remember because I've got such a vast library of music. I think she did Tank, but it wasn't. Mm. Was it? She wrote for. She wrote Tank, and I can't remember <laughs> who played it now. But oh. Cowboy Bebop, if, if people don't know. <laughs> now there's a lot of big names out there uh, for musical composition that it's kind of. I guess you could say. Uh, disheartening for some people because they're always thinking that oh i'll never be that good what's the one piece of advice you can say to someone who's looking to go into game composition and what is the one major mistake most people make Hmm. let's see i think that well i always say this is a caveat like this is not the kind of thing you would want to do unless it's like something you're really really passionate about because it's it's hard to make a living off of like you have to do a lot of different jobs and get your foot in the door and be working for a long time before you can actually make a living off of it and i think a lot of people don't realize that like i see people coming over from the movie industry kind of thinking like well we had a hard time making you know a good living doing film and tv but now this video game avenue is open for us and we're going to do that cuz it's like a gold mine and it's it's really not i mean like i think like the most famous video game composers are nowhere near as, you know, in terms of if people do this for money reasons, like they're not making as much as film composers. And on top of that, there's actually fewer opportunities for game composers. Just because in Hollywood, for example, like to do music for film, a lot of times there's lots of different positions. You have like orchestrators and all the different people in the orchestra, and it takes lots of people to put together a score. Whereas in video games, oftentimes one company only needs one composer and they don't even need to hire them full time. They just have to contract out. And that composer will usually contract out to multiple different companies because they can handle a lot of games at the same time. So I think that it should really be something that you do if you're really, really passionate about it. It's really what you want to do. As for like a tip for people wanting to get in, I would just say keep honing your craft. Like just keep making music and then Look for opportunities to be able to practice that you can put on your resume or in your portfolio. So a lot of people think they have to jump straight to doing big commercial games or trying to work at a company, and then they get discouraged because they aren't able to find jobs. So one thing you can do is go to independent game communities, for example, like IndieGames.com or TigSource.com or places like that, and go to their portfolio section and try to see if you can get work you know, with people on community games or contests or mods. So then at least you're starting to build your portfolio because everyone says it's all about getting your foot in the door and it's all about just like consistency and building your portfolio, you know. (laughs) So that that would be my my major tip. All right. Well, most people, if they don't follow you, uh, wouldn't know that you were making a game for a while there called Mm. Uh, (laughs) Melaloon. Can you go into a little bit of why you started that project? Yeah. Okay. Um, so that game, I started a long time ago and I kind of took a bit of a hiatus because I, I worked at EA for a couple of years as an audio director. So even though they gave me permission to work on it, like I just didn't really have time. But back in the beginning when I was working on the game, I think what I wanted to do was sort of express two things. Like one was the story that I'd been writing for a long time. And the second thing was sort of, I guess the joy that I get out of composing. Like to me, I always was fascinated by old Nintendo music because I was listening to it and thinking, oh, it's it's not just this one melody. Like there's this bass line that's a melody in and of itself. And there's this other thing going on that's also a melody. And, and even though there's all these different things, they fit together like a puzzle and they all sound good together. And so that was one of the most fascinating things to me about composition and, and arranging. So I created these dungeons in the game where you pick up different melodies and as you put them together by solving different parts of the dungeon, the background music changes accordingly. I wanted it to be not just something where it was like, 
here's one note playing. I wanted it to actually sound like a song in and of itself. So there would be like three different parts. Each of them were songs and they'd all fit together as a whole. And I kind of just wanted to show people like, well, this is this is what I love about composing, you know, coming up with something that is greater than its parts, I guess. And yeah, so that's how it got started. Well, that's very interesting and, and very neat idea for a game, really. <laughs> I, I'm surprised that some people haven't already tried to do something like that, but it's very original and I, I enjoyed what I played of it. Oh, thank uh, that, you. That was a long time ago, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I want to come back to it and finish it. I've just, so I worked on it and I got it about 90% content complete. I was at a point where I was going back and doing all the little details, like balancing items and battles and whatnot. And then I started working at a company. And so when I tried to come back to it again after I left, because I'm independent now, it was really hard to get into it. I guess I sort of say to people like, have you ever played an RPG and then you put it down for like a while and when you come back to it, you sort of forget what you're doing? <laughs> oh, all the time, all the time. <laughs> So it's like 10 times harder when you're making an RPG <laughs> to kind of come back and like look at all of the, the database. And it, it was at that point like a 20 hour game. So it was just so overwhelming. And I was spending time just playing through the different parts of the game and taking notes and trying to figure out where I was at with development. And I was kind of getting bogged down by that. I think there was a lot of stuff too that I had forgotten. So I promised myself I wouldn't work on anything else until it got done because I have so many friends that would start these big projects and then just like get another idea so they never finish anything and they jump from idea to idea so I was like okay I'm not going to do anything till I finish this but um the play for Japan song that I wrote my friend Emmy and I she also worked at EA when I was there and I think that song had its own story and so my friend Emmy and I were talking about maybe doing a little short, like simple two frame animation animated video to go along with it. But she ended up moving to Washington because her husband got a job at Valve. And I didn't really want to bug her because I figured she was really busy with moving. But when I went up to Seattle to visit, she brought all these sketches she'd done for that, that concept. And I was so inspired by it that I was like, you know what, we should make a game out of this. And I think it would serve a, a dual purpose. It would help me get back into coding and just messing with the database so that I could get back to Melaloon. But I was like, yeah, so we figured we'd do a short, like three to four hour story game based off of that concept. So that's actually what I've been working on recently. That seems like a very neat idea. And wow, her husband got on the valve. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's pretty big. <laughs> so what do you see yourself doing in five years? Do you still see yourself doing video game composition or do you see yourself moving on to movies or or other walks of life um i don't think i'm actually that interested in doing film I, I mean i think it's fascinating i think there's like a lot of really neat things you can do but i i think my heart is in the, the video game industry so hopefully i would like to have released my game by then <laughs> i mean i'm planning on finishing this one this year because it's not very long but just kind of working on other games and continuing to work on music and doing more with my youtube channel so probably the same same path okay uh we're, we're gonna have to wrap it up where can people follow this information about Meloon, about your personal projects where can they follow you at twitter youtube that kind of stuff i have a website but probably twitter or youtube i update more frequently so my youtube channel is just super shiggy and my twitter also is super shiggy <laughs> If you haven't seen her YouTube videos, you need to go see it. I think it's uh, pronounced Fi, Fi theme on Skyward Sword. It was very beautiful, and you guys need to watch it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, there's one thing I do have to ask, because our site coder won't let me get away with it if I don't. You have a cat named Metroid. Yes. <laughs> uh, of all the things to name a cat, I didn't think a parasite name would be it. <laughs> um, I... I don't know exactly how that came about. I think it wasn't even because I was like, oh, the game, I want to name it after. Well, obviously it was named after the game, but it was more just like talking about like how it would be funny to name a cat Metroid. And then if there was ever a dog to name the dog Mother Brain. So <laughs> it's sort of <laughs> random. <laughs> yeah. He's sitting here now. He's cute. That's <laughs> yeah, a really random name. I'm I'm. Just trying to piece it together. I was like, she either loves a game or that cat eats like no other. 
<laughs> well, I do, I, I do like uh, Castlevania and Metroidvania type games, but it was actually more just a random thing like, ha ha, wouldn't it be funny to name a cat Metroid? <laughs> and then there it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Laura, thank you for joining me here on this interview, and uh, I thoroughly enjoy your work, and I hope you continue to keep doing it. Oh, thank you so much. I had a really fun time. If you guys haven't already, go buy Plants vs. Zombies from PopCap Games. Help support Laura and all of her work, and also play a good game. Oh, <laughs> oh,